What's going on everybody? It's BC9 for XYZ and welcome back to Nancy Drew Treasure in the Royal Tower. We are going back to game number four here of the series. Um, I don't remember where we were. Hi there, how's it going? I'll let you get back to your magazine. Stay warm. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's not necessary. Oh, I think we're, we're supposed to ask Hotchkiss what she wants in her room. Or something. Uh, I'm trying to figure out um, speed as opposed to um, what's it called? Um, sorry, speed as opposed to um, I don't know why that just happened. Speed as opposed to um, recording quality, or find a good balance between the two of them. Um, um, all right, let's go back to Hotchkiss's room. Uh. Ugh! Virginia Woolf never endured such interruptions! <laughs> Who is it? It's Nancy again. Dexter needs to know what you want for dinner. Oh, hard to think of food candy when I'm riding the raging rapids of my theory. Oh, right now, I have plenty of pre-packaged energy globules to keep me going. But... Tell Baxter that I am developing a powerful craving for couscous. Yes, couscous for dinner would be splendid. I'll have a nice tip for you next time, Fanny. Except, of course, there's no couscous in the menu, but she doesn't know that, does she? Come on. Actually, we didn't even need to do that. Oh my god, come on. Should not be hard. I don't know why. Can I help you? Uh, let's tell Dexter about the professor's eating habits. <laughs> the professor says she has a hankering for, um, couscous. Couscous? Never heard of it. Tell her to order something off the menu. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. So, yeah. Obviously, there's nothing on the menu that's related to couscous. Um, again, I want to apologize for my click being so loud on my mouse, but nothing I can do about it. Is that my couscous already? Sorry, Professor, but there's no couscous in the house. You'll need to choose something from the hotel menu. Well, I don't have a menu. At least not from this hotel. Oh, oh be a doll and, and fetch me one, will you? Ta-ta! Uh, did you get the menu? Sure did. How about opening the door so I can give it to you? Oh, you're a sneaky one. Just slip it under the door, please. Nice and easy. No funny stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, baby back ribs. Yes, oh, chili cheese dog. Uh, 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 fried. Bologna sandwich. Uh, I'm not usually much of a meat eater, but uh, very well. Fifty drumsticks, please. Chicken, that is. Cluck, cluck. Sure. Fifty, 50? drumsticks. <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Rock and roll, dear. I can't even eat ten, and she's gonna eat fifty. Oh, good God. Um. Now let's, I guess, tell Dexter about the couscous craving. Can I help you? I mean, couscous drumsticks craving. The professor has changed her order. Seems she's developed an appetite for chicken drumsticks. Fifty of them. Okay, then. Drumsticks we got. Oops. But I guess Jock better take that bag of chicken legs out of the freezer. Will you tell him? And then take the rest of the day off, kid. Your radiator's as good as fixed. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Thanks, Mr. Egan. Alright, so we're gonna save. And continue onward. Um, I guess we gotta, better go tell Jacques Brunet about the chicken problem. No idea what I'm saying at this point. Um, come on.
God, the clicking, come on. Come on, stop being stupid, come on. Ah, Nancy, como se va? Dexter needs you to defrost that big bag of chicken legs. Oh, la la la, what does he think I am? A sous chef? Dexter told me the combination to my locker, number 310, is 517. I tried it, but the locker won't open. Hmm, Dexter must be confused, because I think that is the combination for number 311. I'll try 311. I'll talk to you later. A bientôt. <laughs> he ended it with the mouth like, oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. All right, um, Womp 311. 517 on the way. Da, 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 da. I'm crazy today, I'm just warning y'all. Then again, you probably figured that out already. Voila. And we find out it's someone else's locker. And guess who it is? Haha, it's Lisa. But nope, it's Helen Karp. But no, it's Alina Boyd. But no, it's Tanya Lee Gooding. <laughs> um, yeah, we find out here that she has multiple passports and multiple IDs. But it's not obvious. Why? And then remember that she said that she had only just passed par that barely passed Spanish in high school. Well, guess what? This entire freaking letter's in Spanish, which means that she clearly speaks, um, what do you call it? Um, fluent Spanish. So that's the clue. All right. I don't believe there's anything up there. Yeah. So... I could go confront her about this. In fact, I think I will. Yeah, righty. Through the crowded stone hallway. It takes for... It doesn't take forever to get around, but it takes forever to get around with the... Uh, Hi there, how's it going? So, tell me more about the life of a photojournalist. It must be very glamorous at times. Well, there's nothing glamorous about the pay, I can tell you that much. There was a little mix-up with the lockers, and I accidentally opened yours. Yeah, and? Well, I was kind of confused. I was just trying to see whose stuff was in there, and I found a bunch of IDs in your bag. They all had your picture and other people's names on them. A savvy photojournalist always carries a couple of alternate identities, Nancy. When you're working under deadline, you don't always have time to play by the rules. I'm sure you know what I mean. Does your job take you to exotic, far-off places? Well, there is a lot of travel. Too bad I'm so useless with foreign languages. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Keep me posted. Can I help you? About my radiator, Mr. Egan. Do you think you'll be able to fix it anytime soon? Sorry, not yet. Hotchkiss called to report that she got her boots. But now I'm told that the light is out in the back stairwell. Could you check the circuit breaker in the basement and make sure it's working? Actually, I've already fixed it. Okay, we're really making progress here, kid. So, you go up to Hotchkiss's room and see what she wants for dinner. She's not answering her phone. This is a glitch. No problem, boss. Did you see I fix your radiator? Okay. Okay. See you, Mr. Egan. Goodbye. Uh, what just happened? Alright, so now this is where we go to Hotchkiss's room. That was a weird glitch. Okay. Is that you, Brandy? Oh, I'm glad you're here. At the moment, my theory is rising like a magnificent souffle. I need to collect a few more ingredients, if you will, but it's a delicate situation. If I leave my room even for a moment, I fear the souffle will come crashing down in a heap. Um, you're cooking. You're cooking a souffle in there? Oh, don't take me too literally, dear. 
What I need is some information about the castle. Hard numbers. I've come to the conclusion that you are an enterprising and faithful soul. Therefore, I have decided to entrust you with this important mission. Who knows? If you succeed, I might whisk you away from the hotel business to be my personal research assistant. <laughs> well, Professor Hodgkiss, I'm not actually in the hotel business, but I'd love to help. Marvelous! Here's what I need to know. How old was Marie Antoinette when she married King Louis? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with, but please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. I'm actually not going to do that one. I'm yes! Happy. Did you find the information I asked you for? Uh, can you remind me of what I'm looking for again? You're lucky I don't mind repeating myself. Now, are you listening? How old was Marie Antoinette when she married King Louis? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with. But please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. Um... Uh, King Louis. Hold on. Fourteen. Yes! Did you find the information I asked you for? Sure did. Good, but I need you to write it down so I don't forget. All right. Believe it or not, she was only fourteen, which is really disturbing. Fourteen. Thank you. Let me do some calculations to see if this is correct. No, that can't be it. It doesn't fit my calculations. You'll need to try again. What? Yes. Did you find the information I asked you for? So then the game is wrong. Okay, uh, cool. Can you remind me of what I'm looking for again? Hmm. Uh, I can't seem to find that one. Well, here's another one. On what date was the Bastille prison destroyed during the French Revolution? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with. But please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. Yes, did you find the information I asked you for? Sure did. Good, but I need you to write it down so I don't forget. Now, if this is wrong, now I'm going to scream. Because then this game is incorrect. July... 14, 17, 89. Thank you. Let me do some calculations to see if this is correct. There we go. Good. Eureka! If there's one Eureka. thing I like in a young person, <gasps> it's ingenuity. Now, I've got work to do. Time to stir the cauldron and stoke the fire. But if you'd like to talk, I'll be holding office hours in the lobby between 3 and 6 a.m. Meet me then! And that I will be doing right after I save. Done. Continue. Alright. So that is what we will be doing. Excuse me. Right now, actually. Yeah, now this is all fixed, and now that it's fixed, we have an oil can. There's still Blizzard, strong as ever. On. So let's go to 3 a.m. Of course, this place has no security cameras. So the first thing we're gonna do, actually before we talk to Marie, who's in the living room, or the sitting room, is we're gonna go behind the desk. And get a very special key. That's the library key. We also have a to-do list. But we don't have anything else behind the desk, believe it or not. Nothing else interesting, actually. Uh, but yes, let's talk to Marie. Nancy, dear, welcome to the witching hour. Isn't it marvelous to be up and about when others are sound asleep? I find my brainwaves are at their most powerful during this time. 
Yes, I happen to do some of my best work in the middle of the night, too. So, tell me, Professor, what is this theory you're working on? Well, you probably know by now that I'm a scholar of French history. <laughs> my specialty is Marie Antoinette. Oh, poor Marie, the most misunderstood queen of the 18th century. Marie used to visit the very tower that now belongs to this castle. I'm convinced that this place holds evidence that will forever change the way the world views Marie. But the walls have ears, so I'd rather not say any more right now. Oh, if you're really interested, why don't you go up to my room and have a look around yourself? You've been such a great help to me, almost like an apprentice. Oh, I've always wanted an apprentice. Wow, Professor, that's really generous of you. I'd love to learn more about your work, but are you sure you don't mind? I insist! Your mind is like a ravenous monkey gobbling up every banana in its path. Oh, how can I stand in the way? Here's my extra pass key. I get back to work at 6 a.m. sharp, so just make sure you vacate the premises by 5.59 and put things back where you find them. It's all scientifically organized in there. We'll See talk you to soon. Her later. Goodbye. Anyway, so we'll be right back, guys, and we're going to uh, go explore uh, her room after this. Take care, guys. Thanks so much.